Hi guys and welcome to Dial It Up. Today we are going to be talking about knockback and how to properly use knockback in the game, what causes knockback, and all of the special little rules that go around when knockback occurs. So knockback is one of those fun little things that happen in this game and the standard way for knockback to occur is when you roll doubles on a successful hit. I do say successful because it is possible to roll doubles when you are not actually hitting as well as a critical miss is always a miss and it is not possible to roll knockback on a critical miss. Also a critical hit which are natural double sixes on your dice, those also cause knockback. Usually this is a doubles roll that gets missed because there's a lot that goes into a critical hit. Usually people are really excited about doing the extra damage and forget that a critical hit will actually cause knockback as well. So once you have knockback occurring, a character will be knocked back away from their attacker in a direct line. So here we have Cyclops, he has hit Mira, she's going to go back, the amount squares equal to the amount of damage taken. So he's dealing four, she has no reducers, so she's going to move back one, two, three, four. Now if she was standing here, she'd be going this direction or this direction, a direct line. The knockback line always goes directly back from the attacker. However, it is possible for a character to not be on the direct line to their attacker. In that case, they are going to go... Sorry, I have to blow this up for this example. In that case, they are actually going to go directly, diagonally back. So no matter how they are offset, it always goes diagonally if they're not on a direct line. So, so in this case, because Mira is not on the direct di or direct line of Cyclops, she's going to go directly diagonal from where he forced or from where he knocked her back. Now, knockback, as well as being able to knock a character back squares on the map, also has certain effects when it interacts with terrain that's on the map. Now, I showed you earlier her knocking through hindering. That's not going to stop her. If a knockback path goes through hindering terrain, you don't stop. You just keep going past. However, if a knockback path is going to knock you into blocking terrain, you get stopped as well as you are dealt one damage for knocking into blocking terrain. Now, it's port important to note that any damage dealt from a knockback is not part of the attack and will happen after regular attack damage has been dealt but before the action resolves. So the next part of terrain that interacts with knockback is elevated terrain. So if Mira is getting knocked back here, she's gonna her direct line of the knockback path is going to go off elevated. However, if she drops from one elevation to the next elevation down, she will stop in the next square and be dealt two damage for falling off the elevation, whereas blocking would only deal the one damage. Now elevation going the other direction, so going from a lower elevation to a higher elevation is going to act very similar to blocking terrain and that you won't, you'll knock into the elevation, if you were further, you'll knock into the elevation, stop, and take one damage for hitting the elevation. Now, uh, I did say blocking terrain, that also includes walls, squares of blocking terrain, barrier, anything that is blocking elevation, this is going to cause that one damage. Now, the final bit of map terrain that is interacts with knockback is actually the edge of the map. For knockback purposes only or unless specified otherwise, the edge of a map will act as blocking terrain. You'll get knocked back and take the damage only if the knockback path was to go beyond the blocking 
or the elevation. Now, the character doesn't have to actually physically move to be knocked into a wall or elevation or the side of the map. As long as that knockback would go past, uh, once the knockback path is determined to go past a piece of blocking elevated map, that's when the knockback damage is determined. So now that we've talked about how knockback happens and when it occurs, there are also things in the game that will stop knockback from happening. And that are standard powers, we're looking at charge and combat reflexes, as well as anybody that is a larger base, so bigger than a single base, and Colossals I think is actually written into their powers that they cannot be knocked back. Now, in the sense of the charge and the combat reflexes, this is actually determined before any damage is dealt. So if bef once the attack is successful and before damage is actually dealt, you check to see if uh, any of either of those powers are showing. So right now, Night Fla Thrasher actually has both showing charge and combat reflexes. Either of those are going to stop the knockback from actually happening. So now that we've talked about with the charge and the combat reflexes, now I mentioned that they are checked for before the damage is dealt. So if you have a character that's not showing those and they're being dealt damage, but then they click into those powers, you're still gonna be dealt the knockback because that check is made beforehand, not afterwards. So even if they gain one of those two powers that's gonna ignore the knockback, they'll still be knocked back because the check is done before. So the next part with knockback and characters that aren't as affected by it are flyers and elevated. Because the character flies, if they're being knocked back off the elevated, they don't actually take the knockback damage for it. Only characters that have without the flight symbol will be able to <laughs> take that knockback, extra knockback damage for being thrown off the building. All right, so now we're going over the powers of how they interact with knockback. One of the weirder ones is pulse wave. If you are dealing knockback damage and knockback itself during pulse wave, those powers are still being ignored during that action. So even if we have Hellcat here, she's got charge, normally the knockback wouldn't occur because she'd be ignoring it with charge. But the pulse wave is ignoring her charge so she's not allowed to ignore the knockback. So anybody that's pulse waving with a doubles is going to knock back that charge character because as far as Firestorm, Firestar is concerned, Hellcat doesn't have charge. Okay. This is the uh, another part of pulse wave with knockback. This is actually one that I recently discovered myself. And that is when you were in a situation where you can knock back multiple characters, you actually always start with the character furthest away from you. So in this situation, we would start with Mira and Justice. So not Justice will get knocked back one. Mira will get knocked back. Now she's offset from Firestar, so she'll get knocked back on the direct diagonal. And then you go to the next row of characters. Hellcat will be knocked back one. Cyclops will be knocked back one. So there are standard powers within this game that actually cause knockback. One of those is Quake. Now Quake's essential big part of Quake is causing knockback. One of the things that's often overlooked with the knockback from Quake is that regardless of how much damage is taken, it always knocks back two squares. So in this situation, Guardian is going to be able to Quake all of them because they're all adjacent to him and all of them will be knocked two squares away from him. So here we have Justice and Firestar are each going to get knocked back too. Sorry. In this situation, they would be knocked back too because Quake always does that, but they're falling off the building, so that rule overrides it, and they stop there. They are also happen to be flyers, so they're not going to take any extra knockback damage. Cyclops will just go two backwards. Hellcat will go two backwards. Now Mira, she would go two backwards, but because she's on the direct diagonal from Guardian, the blocking is in the way. So instead of being knocked back, she'll be knocked back into the blocking 
and then take the extra knockback damage from being thrown into a piece of blocking tree. Okay. Yeah. Now, in that scenario, I did choose or did show Hellback, Hellback, Hellcat as moving back. However, she is showing charge, so she actually wouldn't be knocked back because the charge would be ignoring it. I just wanted to show you guys how everybody just kind of goes bleh once you quake. <laughs> The next standard power that causes knockback is Force Blast. Now this is a really fun standard power and that you can actually just give it a, what type of action is this? A power action to roll a die. And we're targeting Justice with Cyclops. Cyclops, sorry, Justice is Force Blasting Cyclops. Oh, and he rolls a six. So with Force Blast, you're gonna move the number of squares that you rolled. So one, two, three, four, five, six. So, oh my gosh, Cyclops is very, very far away. Now this will cover all of the regular knockback rules. If Cyclops had charge or combat reflexes, he wouldn't be able to be moved back. But it's a good way to just kind of get a character out of your face without having to make an attack or chance having to roll doubles in order to cause that knockback. The next part of Force Blast, and this is a passive ability, so this can actually always happen. I don't think I've ever really seen someone do this part of Force Blast, except for Jason, because he knows it. This was actually a recent rule change within 2013 pack update, is that they added a passive ability that any time a character with Force Blast successfully hits a character, that's a seven, I think that I actually hit. Um, you may choose to cause knockback. Boom. Suck it, Summers. And that can be on also a ranged combat or a close combat attack. Any successful hit made by a character with Force Blast, you can choose to activate knockback. And that was knockback. Hopefully I went over everything that you guys did already know or didn't know about Force Blast and explained it sufficiently for you. However, if I didn't, if you have any comments, questions, or concerns, just let me know down below and we'll see you guys next time for another episode of Dial It Up. Raid with Clicks is brought to you by Majestic's Hero Click Sales down in Costa Mesa, California. Right now, they're in the middle of a storefront change. In the meantime, don't forget to check out their eBay store. If you check the link down below, they always have great Hero Click stuff at fantastic prices and they'll ship just about anywhere.